educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. I posted the chart of the Dow E-mini. We just made a 382 retracement on the day. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know. Uh, if it gets above one or gets above 33,850, I would say it's no good. But right now, looks like it might be working. Going to cover some others too, folks. Uh, our guest today was supposed to be Jim Bartolioni. But Jim uh, is not going to be able to make it. Uh, he forgot that there was something really big happening today. One of his classmates from the Naval Academy has been made the commandant, commandante of none other than the Navy SEALs, the NSWs out of San Diego, California. That's where they're trained. And Jim's good buddy is going to be the commandant there running all the Navy SEALs uh, through this level so let's uh, give him a heads up when we have him on next week monday of course we're having none other than mr norm winsky of astro trends and then on wednesday we're probably going to have jeff huge on thursday we'll have stan harley and friday i'm trying to get a special guest lined up for us haven't heard back yet but He's a uh, world-class guy, and if we do get him, it'll be really fun. He's only been on once once before. Now, folks, this is a really big day. Uh, this is a big week. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I remember now I am a technician. The news means diddly squat to me. All Never has, never will. But remember, we were watching here. <clears throat> Here's where we were. And I'm going to go through these again because they're that important. They're that important to me because I am going to be loading the boat on the short side today if we close lower. Okay, here is the 200-day moving average, okay? Coming down, that's a basically a 135 pattern, folks. That's where we are right now. I'm going to do the Dow Jones chart right after I do the second chart here because I want to do this because this was sent to us uh, to give us some good information. And so far, it's been good information. Now, if we go back and we compare where we were in 2008 if you remember 2008 was the low going into 2000 the low was not until march of 2009 and you can see there we are again hanging right at the 200 day moving average so <clears throat> that means that the market's repeating what it did 14 years ago so let's pay attention to that a couple other things that are pretty important that we have already talked about one of them was we're going to take a look here at the cash s p I'm going to build a case where you better get out of your lungs or stay short, folks. That's what close strongly up today or up Monday, Tuesday. Anytime we take out those highs we made this week, this is all bullpucky. It ain't going to work. So you don't want to stand in front of it. We had that big ABCD up there at the top. There's your little three drive pattern that we pointed out to you. And then also, of course, when we were on the show uh, on Monday, we were talking to you about the, excuse me, it was on Tuesday. We wanted to get this up here to remind us that uh, what we were looking at here was the uh, 1.618 expansion in the Dow Jones E-mini, right up against that number that we're looking up there, 32,252. So that was very important. But then, of course, the big one, and that was the daily chart of the Dow Jones uh, E-mini, and I will get that up here right now, and you'll be able to see where we stand and why we are so bearish at this particular point. And uh, it, this is uh, patterns fail, and when they do fail, they go the other way. There was your 78% level right up here. We hit it absolute spot on. Okay, now we get above that. This is all baloney because all we've done all week long is go sideways. That's all we really know. We're down a couple hundred points, but that's nothing amongst the boys and girls at the New York Stock Exchange. So this is why this is setting up to be a potential for something extremely, extremely bearish. And that's why it's so very, very important. Now, I'm going to go through a few other charts that 
but I think you'll that I think you'll find interesting. And if you don't, that's okay too. But here was a low we made today. I wanted to point this out to you because this was completing. This is not really not nothing really super bearish is happening here. But here is the Dow Jones E mini this morning. That was and then of course we went up and we just made the three eight two up here. That's why I, I marked that in to let you see that we did make that. So as long as we hold this level right here, this still looks relatively bullish. If we close below the lows today, and we've got a couple hours, about three hours or so to go, that is going to be extremely, extremely, extremely bearish. So we need to pay really close attention to that. So let's remind ourselves of that. Now, one other thing that happened this morning, and those of you that like 382s, I want to bring a couple of these up here to show you that uh, they do uh, work some of the time, all of the time, never, but some of the time, yes. There was your 3A2 retracement up there right after the opening at 42.61, and we came down, made new lows, we rallied back, and just bouncing around right now, not too much happening. So those are the things that we're paying close attention to right now. We're right back to the 3A2 now in the Dow E-mini at 33.810, and as long as we don't get above 33. Uh, 850, that 382 is holding. So that's the main thing that you've got to remember. These patterns basically repeat and they give you a probability, but that's all it is, boys and girls. It's just a probability. Trust old Billy Ray on that one, please, because uh, when they fail, boy, they fail really badly and you don't want to stand in front of them when they fail. Okay, now, a couple things that I wanted to show you that will help you in your trading in the future. I hope so anyway. Here is the big trade yesterday that we were talking about. And of course, those of you that belong to the 24-7, I sent out a video uh, last night after the close and said, this is not going to work. And the reason behind it was looking at the euro because you know the dollar index, if it's strong, it's really difficult for gold to be to go up. So there it was right at the 382 retracement. It did rally $5 or $500. It got up to uh, uh, 1775 uh, from 1769. And then from 1769, it went down and may, has made new lows. Now, let's play the devil's advocate here for just a moment here in the gold. If we think that this pattern is going to fail, what would be the very first thing we would want to be looking at in gold today to find out whether this could possibly be a good entry from the short side. Does anybody want to guess? Ah, we have a a winner from Palm Harbor, Florida, Mr. Joseph Joseph uh, Arafat. No, that can't be right. I can't read the last name. Anyway, he said sell the first three eight two retracement. Well, Joseph, you win the Cupid doll. So let's take a look here. What happened to gold today? And we'll see if the 382 was our friend to not, or today or not in the gold. And as you can see, there's where we went. We rallied up exactly to the 382, 1772. And then from there, we dropped $12, $12 down to uh, 1761. And we're, we're still uh, moving lower. We'll take a little break here. 877-927-6648. Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I'm going to switch over and talk about the bond market here. This is what we're looking for for this week as our profit objective. You can see that's a Gartley pattern down here at the 50% level. We had the big ABCD. There was the 50%, folks, uh, on the Treasury bonds. Remember, the notes went to the 382. That was up at 46, and now we're trading eight handles lower. And, uh, you know, with this market breaking like this, uh, we could easily – go down and take out these lows without any trouble because the bond market is in big trouble, folks. Uh, there's not too much the Federal Reserve can do from this level based on what I look at because uh, these markets are beginning to look weaker and weaker, even in stocks. So let's remind our, ourselves of that. Wow, the, F, uh, the F-16s the F are flying around today, folks. They, I don't know if we're getting ready for war or not, but boy, the planes, the, we, we have Dave, Davis uh, Monthon Air Force Base here. Uh, is a huge Air Force base. They even have the uh, the uh, supersonic plane coming into the, what's they call that big thing? I can't remember now. Anyway, that big plane comes in. Uh, this, uh, oh, shuck. Anyway, it's incredible to watch this. It's, uh, uh, it's really amazing to see that. I, what is that name of that spy plane that flies all over? I'll think of it in a minute. And let's move on here and talk a little bit more about these bonds because I think we're going to go a whole lot lower uh, in the Treasury bonds, folks. We're in a bear market. We've been in a bear market in Treasury bonds for two and a half years. If you remember at the top, they were trying to feed us the cannon fodder about the old uh, negative interest rates. Uh, you got to use a little bit of common sense in here. And speaking of common sense, let's talk a little bit about natural gas because we've been talking about that every day here. I wanted to show you the, the, yesterday's action just to give you an idea that you don't have to be a rocket science to do this stuff, folks. If you take a look at this, this is just a small intraday chart on the natural gas. And as you can see here, it's a, it's an hourly chart. It goes over the last few days. You can see the load that we made here was an exact 3A2. You can see the beautiful ABCD that was there. There's A. B, C, D coming in right at the 3A2, and then we go up and make a new high. Folks, when that happens and you come in for today, the main thing you want to do is you want to measure this low here from that low there just in, just in case. And, you know, just in case, it happens to be a 3A2, okay? So what are we going to do today, boys and girls? 
we're going to take into Mr. Rogers' drawing room and we're going to draw it for you so that you can see it and you'll be able to see where we are. And there it is, right there. 382, right on the money, and you can see we rallied well over $4,000 and we're still going up. So that's the one thing. We get a real strong trending market, either up or down. Watch for those 382s, and when you make a lower low or a higher high, double check that 382 again because it's going to go up. These folks that are doing this algorithmic trading stuff out there, folks, they have to be using this kind of stuff because you can't see these numbers day after day, and they're not paying attention to that. Hello, operator. I mean, give me a break. When I first started doing these books, uh, the F word was uh, not Fibonacci. It was something else. Fibonacci was the new F word because it didn't even become pop popular until probably 15 or 20 years ago. And uh, so, hell, that easy, that. Maybe 30 at the most. But uh, you don't see Fibonacci in any of the early literature with Wyckoff or Gartley or any of that stuff. They knew five-eighths and they knew three-eighths, but they didn't mention Fibonacci. Elliot was the first guy to talk about it in 1938. He talked about 382 and 618, and that was the extent of it, 50% maybe, but uh, no 1.27s, no 786s. Um, and uh, there may have been a 1.618 in there. I can't remember because I... It's been too long ago since I've looked at the Elliott Wave stuff. But I, I gave up on Elliott, folks, when I had uh, my friends come into the trading room there, into, into Pismo Beach, you know, Bob Miner, um, Glenn Neely, uh, Bryce Gilmore. He was there three or four months every year. And, you know, these guys were experts in Elliott Wave. And you get three of them in the room, they couldn't, they couldn't tell you what time of day it was. Because they couldn't agree whether it was a one or three or five or four or six or a nine or a 12 or 13. And I'm over there trading. And they say, how can you trade if you don't know what it is? And I said, I don't need it. This is all I need. I know one thing, A, B equals C, D. Beyond that, don't make a whole lot of difference to me. But uh, that's basically how I look at it. I keep it as simple as possible. And that's basically it. I know there's a lot of really a whole lot of smart people out there that do some great work, and, and I respect it, and I look at it. But when it comes down to it, the one thing I know is A, B equals C, D, as old Mark used to tell me, and that's where my game plan is, and that's where I stand, uh, and I'll stay that way for, for quite a while. I look at other things, but, you know, these guys, some of these guys in astrology and stuff, my God, they're incredibly smart. You know, and I... I all I know is I know one thing. I know if that thing's working, it's going to work. And if it's not working, I'm going to lose and move on to the next one. Now, I've got an interesting chart here. One of our guests, not next week, but the following week, will be J.C. Parrots of All Star Charts. He happens to be on holiday right now down in Florida somewhere in one of those beautiful beach cities. And, but he brings this chart, and it shows you where we are here, folks, silver in relation to the price of the S&P, in other words, silver is at an all-time low when you uh, in, ra in ratio to the stocks. Now, I don't know what that means. All I know is it's making new lows, and silver is certainly not making new lows. It's trading for 19. The low was $17 an ounce. So I'm still very, very bullish on gold, but the fact that it didn't hold that number tells us that we want to go lower. And now we, we had the break you know, down to um, – uh, 1766. We had the rally up to 1772. That's going to give us a price around 18, 1756. Now, ideally, what I'd like to see in gold is see a really big washout, and um, then we'll be able to take a look at it. But frankly, I, I think we've got a chance here in some of these to uh, get a little bit better uh, prices uh, going down the road here, and we'll we'll see where we are uh, to that point. Okay, I wanted to double check to see. A uh, couple prices in here, see how things are going. Now, one of the reasons, the main reason why we exited the gold yesterday, folks, uh, after we were on the show here, I put the video out immediately after the close saying, hey, this ain't right. Let's get out of the way. And the reason for that, I'm going to bring it up here and show you, which is the euro versus the U.S. dollar. So let's get this up here and we'll be able to see it. And there we go. There'll be a lot of videos on foreign exchange this weekend, folks, because we've had some really important things happen in the dollar yen and the Canadian dollar and also the uh, British pound. The British pound has some really good news today and the market tanked. 
down below 117. And remember, we got up to 121 just the other day, and you gave it all back. But look at the look at this downtrend that we've had in the euro, folks. I mean, look, 382, 382, 382, 382. And now, folks, we're below this level right here. That, that's today. I mean, this is what we were breaking down last night. And I said, hey, it's going to be real hard for gold to rally. You know, and I said, I just didn't want to take the risk. And so I decided to uh, stand aside and, and wait and see, you know, what the next step is going to be. Now, we get back. Uh, we're going to talk about something that Mr. Zachary, Mr. Z from, where is it? If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, if you did the trade in the uh, Dow E Mini up there at the 382, you now have your $250 profit. So put your stop at break even and let her rip is what I would do. And so let's keep an eye on it. Anyway, I posted the chart of the euro, and as you can see here, folks, we are, we're below the 786, and we're heading lower. Uh, I think we're going to get below par uh, this next coming week. We're trading at uh, only 30, uh, we're 40 pips away from taking that out. That's a, that's a small amount for the uh, euro, but I believe we're going to make a bigger ABCD down there at around 96. Remember back in 2000, you know, the euro was trading at about 84 so, uh, you know, it could easily go back there again without any trouble at all, considering all the problems that they're having in, in Europe. We have a good friend over in Ireland, and it's very, very hot over there. 
In fact, it's so hot that they can't even turn the air conditioning on because they don't need air conditioning very much. But there's just not enough energy to run it all because they have to uh, ration it. So that's not a good sign. I mean, we've uh, we've seen some of these things happening. You know, we've got nine dollars now in our natural gas. Remember, folks, the high in our natural gas contract several years ago was at 17. And from 17, we went down to uh, $3, if you'll remember. And from $3, we've been up to 9 And now uh, we're getting ready to probably break out to the upside. And from the strength that we're seeing today, we could probably do that without any trouble next week. Now, we want to talk just a tiny bit uh, because this has been a really big week from the uh, uh, metals. <laughs> Let's try it again, Larry. From the energy standpoint, uh, you'll remember here, this is the weekly chart that we were focusing on all week long. With the uh, crude oil, we want to get up here uh, to see there's the 382 retracement. Wow. <clears throat> Timeout operator. This is a 61% retracement, folks. You can see it right here, 61% retracement. I drew in with the Anson tool, the ABCD pattern. Comes in at 8701. The low was uh, 80. Uh, 8615, I believe, or 8585, something like that. And now we've had a pretty good rally. And this is what we were talking about uh, last night when we were, uh, you know, bringing uh, things up to you uh, for, uh, for, for today. I want to get this up here so you'll be able to see it. By, by the way, folks, today is a big day. Today, my little daughter, Jilly, my oldest one, is uh, 50... Four years old, believe it or not. Are you believing? I can't believe that myself. Anyway, there's a perfect 61% retracement off of the low that we made right down here, which was the low for the contract. Then we had higher lows all the way through here. And then we had the big low today right at the 61% retracement. And we were really immediately rally over $2,000 a contract. And so those are some of the things. And that was happening when the natural gas was starting to run, too. So energy was was in play, you know, very strong uh, today. So we want to remind ourselves that this may or may not be a major bottom. But we, what we should do is to go back, and because these patterns repeat, and I know you, you, uh, you, you forget sometimes, and I certainly do, too. But if we take a look here, uh, this is going to be the one on the uh, – as the heating oil – as you can see here, uh, we made the uh, beautiful ABCD butterfly pattern down there at the bottom. Now, a three drive pattern would have had equal bottoms, you know, three drive, but because this bottom is higher, that means it's a butterfly pattern. If this was lower, it would be a three drive pattern. It's all related to, you know what, folks? Are you ready? A, B equals C, D. A, B equals C, D. And look where we're going now. A, B equals C, D. We're heading up to this first level of resistance in the uh, heating oil. Now, the next one we want to take a look at, I'm bringing this to your attention because I think these were the main things that happened this week, folks. Uh, and we've had a pretty big week here. So let's, let's just uh, remind ourselves that these patterns are predictable within limits. Okay, and here, now we're looking at the gasoline contract. Folks, in Tucson, our gasoline from the high that we had at 501 per gallon all the way down to the low we've seen this week is 341. We dropped a dollar 60 a gallon in these past three weeks. And now you'll see the ABCD that we've got forming here. And uh, we want to measure, of course, this weekend, we want to see what that 382 rally is going to be. Now, something very exciting happened here in Tucson uh, last uh, two, uh, yesterday, folks. Uh, you know, I play poker uh, once or twice a week if I can, at least two or three times a month down at one of our casinos. We have two of them here where we play, you know, tournaments with uh, Texas Hold'em and you buy in for 60 bucks or 70 bucks and you get to play with 40 people and they split the top five players and that kind of thing. But in that game are always Border Patrol agents because we're right on the border, folks. The casino is exactly 51 miles from the Mexican border and these these uh, Border Patrol guys, uh, you know, they've been career people and they tell us what's going on in the in in the, the, in the neighborhood and yesterday I, I happened to be down there I didn't get to play very much but I had to go visit someone for a minute and uh, talk to, to Mike and 
he said, you wouldn't believe, he says, what one of our agents picked up this week. And I said, what was it? He said, they, they picked up a duffel bag just inside of the Mexican border, about 12 miles inside the Mexican border on the U.S. side. It was a duffel bag, and in the duffel bag there were 20 guns. It was one of these big uh, duffel bags, and it had uh, two AK-47s, two AR-15s, uh, and a whole bunch of handguns and Mac 10s, you know, these are the automatic pistols. And every single one of the guns, folks, had a custom silencer. And these silencers were manufactured silencers. These are not the kind with a paper bottle, you know, with a plastic bottle and styrofoam. These were actual, you know, metal ones that attached to the guns. And uh, I asked Mike, I said, what, what do you think that bag was worth? And he said, at least $50,000. Had a thousand rounds, roughly a thousand rounds of ammunition. And it was just laying on the side of the road. And the only thing can figure is somebody didn't want to get caught with it and just left it and drove on. So, but that's a, that's a big, big, uh, <laughs> that's a big thing, $50,000 in guns. But silencers, folks, are extremely illegal. I think it's a minimum of a $15,000 fine and one year in jail, as I recall. That's what it used to be. I, I've only had one gun. This was 40 years ago. I had one gun that was a silencer. It was a 1925 flat black Colt. In other words, it was a Colt 38, but really, really slim. And it had a silencer connected to it. And it was in a, it was in a wooden box, a presentation type box. And uh, it was uh, m part of the U.S. government, a government issue. So it was a spy type gun. But I sold it. Oh, my gosh. I sold it uh, for about four times what I paid for it back in, well, I think I sold it in 1971 or 72, somewhere in that ballpark. But uh, that's neither here nor there. I have, you know, I have only a few guns left. I mean, really, Barry, I'm down to maybe 40 or 50 handguns, a couple of machine guns, a large rocket. And uh, what else I have? Uh, oh, Claymore mines. I got a lot of Claymore mines around the house to keep the bad people away. All right. I want to show you something here from our good friend Zachary down there in uh, – where is it? Where are you? Are, so I think he's in uh, Natchez, Mississippi or someplace like that. He's got a really cool chart here. This comes from uh, the uh, – uh, hold on just one second here. We'll get this up here, and you'll be able to see it. This comes from McClellan Oscillator, folks. And uh, this shows you basically that we could be topping. It's a five-year cycle that we could be topping in inflation. But remember, folks, <laughs> in 1980, when, when Volcker took over, you know, we had interest rates at 13%. That didn't get cleared out until 1992. So we could be looking at some serious inflation here. Let's take a break. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, folks, if someone asked the question, they missed the first part of the show, and they asked what was the most important chart that I looked at today, and I posted that chart of the Dow Jones E-mini, the daily. Going back to the high we made on January 4th, you can see the 135 pattern uh, completing right here at the 78% level. That was just a few days ago uh, when we were at uh, 34,002. Uh, Can't remember what it was. 34,000, I got it right here, so just a second. It was at, yeah, 34,200 and something. By the way, if you're in that, uh, if you sold that 382 in the Dow E-mini, you've got about $400 profit in it. So for God's sake, don't let it go to a loss, if nothing else. Uh, I would hold on to it, but I would certainly uh, keep a stop at break even because you know that's where the 382 came in. But this was not, this was just one of the charts, folks. Remember, there was a chart of how the 200-day moving average was the same as it was in 2008, you know, the same type of a 135 pattern. We also had the fact that the SPX was making a 1.618 expansion. Uh, we also had the Gartleys that were happening in the Russell, the NASDAQ, and all the others coming combined. It's telling us that, yes, there could be something, you know, really dramatic in here. And so I think it's important that we do this. Another question that someone asked me is, is about, Things that happen in the news, you know, plots and, uh, you know, I don't know what you call these things, but um, I, I really don't get involved. I try not to, best of my, to my ability. It's not always easy. But when you hear about these conspiracy theories and all this other stuff, folks, I mean, God, I've been listening to this stuff for so long. I, I was really, really heavily influenced when President Kennedy was killed. And because I had one of those guns, those Mandlinger Kakano rifles that uh, Mr. Uh, Oswald supposedly used. I can promise you two things. One, folks, Oswald did not kill President Kennedy with that gun. He might have used a different gun, but he didn't use that gun. That gun couldn't hit the side of a barn. And the reason why it was an Italian knockoff of the Mauser action, in other words, the bolt action on the Mauser was absolute precision. But on that Italian rifle, that bolt wiggled back and forth. So when the bullet went out, it could go anywhere, 30, 40 feet. And remember, he was a long way shooting at a you know target that was 19 or uh, that was, uh, I forget how far it was, but there was no way that, that they could fire three shots with that gun during that time. And that, that those are just little things. And this was such a cup. What am I doing? I'm getting talking about conspiracy theories. Anyway, that's what that's what ended it for me, folks. I said, well, after that, you know, I don't uh, I don't want to pay attention. In fact, the guy running the whole thing was Chief Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Earl Warren. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So I'll move on. OK, let's get back in. Uh, to that level. So we'll see what's happening here. So I try to stay away from it. It's not easy, but uh, that's the that's the way that uh, I'm looking at it as I see these things. Several people have asked me uh, about the grain markets. I still think we're going to be moving higher, folks. 
We've got shortages coming this next year if we don't have a bumper crop in corn and beans and wheat. Look at wheat. Wheat is this is going to be the focus next week is looking to buy wheat because we're seeing wheat prices, you know, collapsing. We were fourteen dollars in wheat, you know, just uh, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, I mean, look where we are now, folks. I mean, my goodness, let's just get this up here so you can take a look at it. Because we're down here where we want to be. We're about half the price of where we were. They're giving a discount, you know, from $14 to $7. Now, down in this area, this is the area where we're looking right now this weekend, is we want to be watching for a possible bottom in the wheat. Because this has got all the, all the attributes that you want to see. You've got the three-drive pattern coming down in, making new lows. Okay, you got the whole world bearish. I mean, how many people were bearish up here, folks? Remember, this was when Korea, the Crimea was going to blow up and all the wheat in the world was going to be gone and everybody was going to starve. Well, now they can buy it for 50 cents on the dollar and nobody's starving. So that's neither here nor there. But we're going to be watching wheat for a potential buy down in this area because it's got all the things that we like to see. We got the supply demand now in our favor. You don't have to risk very much at that point, do you? No, not too much, but we want to pay really, really close attention to it because that's what we want to be. Uh, that's what we want to be watching for uh, is a potential buy down here in wheat. Um, I don't know if we'll get it below seven dollars, but we might get close to that. And if we do, and if we do, that will be a good sign to be getting along the wheat. Corn is still acting relatively bullish. As is, let's just get the corn up so you'll be able to see here. This was as of Sunday night. And, of course, oh, we've got Mr. Z on the line from Philly. John, how are you? Larry, I'm doing very well. I uh, I love hearing your stories, especially uh, that one of uh, Jim B's pal, uh, Jim B's pal who was taken over as commandant. Yeah. Yeah, he'll tell us about it next week when he comes on. Yeah, he's uh, he's a big he's a top Navy SEAL now. So, but Jim, you know, Jim was a he was a um, what do you call it? A top Gun pilot. He was not a uh, he was not a Navy SEAL. He he was a uh, I forget what they call those guys that land those planes, air jockeys or whatever they joke about. But that's what he does. He was in the fighter planes. He he wasn't a Navy SEAL. Very good, Larry. I just had to call in and uh, give you kudos on your patterns and just share an observation uh, specifically on wheat that you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Tiger's uh, Den on Discord, I just posted the daily charts of the December Kansas City wheat contract. Mm -hmm. uh, you recall uh, yesterday, Thursday morning, I emailed to you and some other people the weekly charts mm -hmm. of all three classes of U.S. wheat, the Chicago yep. wheat, the Kansas City wheat, and the Minneapolis wheat contract, and how all were making new bear market lows, and two of the three were uh, either testing exactly or approaching the long-term FIB 618 levels. Yep. Anyway, uh, that was Thursday morning. Uh, I will, uh, people in the den know I bought the Dease wheat, uh, Dease Kansas City wheat last night, but uh, I have to bring to your attention a key Pesavento pattern, and that is a literally textbook butterfly to bottom uh, pattern on the daily chart on that December Kansas City daily wheat chart. Larry, uh, I've seen these butterfly to bottoms in some of these ag contracts over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, they are just amazing. I believe this this exam, uh, this market right here, right now, is just another textbook example thereof. So uh, kudos to you on those patterns. I just love them. Yeah, that's really good. Well, I appreciate all the work that you do here in the den, John, because you really show the folks what you're looking at. And you pull no punches, and when you're wrong, you tell them why. But, boy, you've got a tremendous record of uh, nailing some of these things. But, you know, what amazes me, John, at $14 a bushel, nobody would even think about selling it short. Now it's, now it's $7, and nobody wants it. I mean, what's the big what's the big deal? I mean, then you wonder why I'm a technician. Hello, operator. Give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hello indeed. I I, uh, yeah. I confess, Larry. Um, nope, there's the uh, that's there's our the old thing. 
Hey, thanks for calling in, my friend, and may God bless. Have a wonderful summer, John. We'll be right back, boys and girls. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to talk to you about corn here a little bit. The chart that I posted was the one from uh, Sunday. Uh, when I send the newsletter out for the week, you notice that was a 382 in the corn, and we we broke 40 cents. Uh, we got <clears throat> below six dollars for just a moment. Now we're back to 620, <clears throat> but it's held up relatively well. So anyway, that's why I wanted to point point that out to you that these numbers they don't work all the time, but they work some of the time, and that's the key to uh, you know doing what we're doing here, and that's uh, basically <coughs> excuse me or what we're paying attention to. Now, I uh, want to talk just a little bit more about the bond market, folks. Uh, you'll notice we've had a big breakdown from that 382 retracement on the weekly there at 146. We've dropped eight handles down to, uh, uh, we hit 138 and change today. Um, the Federal Reserve is trapped, folks. They really have got very little that they can do to reduce, uh, int uh, to keep interest rates where they want them because in with inflation as bad as it is, they've got to raise rates to stop the inflation. Now, inflation's probably, you know, lagging by a little bit, 
but that's neither here nor there. We have to pay close attention to that is why we're doing it. Now, remember, you don't want to miss Monday's show because we have none other than Mr. Norm Winsky of Astral Trends on Monday. And Tuesday, we hope we'll have Jim Bartolioni. Wednesday, we're going to have Jeff Huge. Thursday, we're going to have Stan Harley. And Friday, we have a mystery guest yet to be named, but is in the process of getting. Remember, folks, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless and do something for your neighbors. Uh, and be sure that you don't lose anything in the Dow Jones E-mini. Put your stop at break even, which would be at 33.810. And uh, you've got 300 and some bucks in it now if you wanted to take it. But frankly, I would shoot for something a little better and not lose anything. That's the key. See you all on Monday, folks, and may God bless.